Hello, streamers! It's Q&A day, specifically about Ekim, but if you want to tackle some other things, we can certainly do that at the end as well. So if you have questions about how to use Ekim Live, uh, this is the show for you. If you have questions about simulcasting or any of that other kind of stuff that we see so very often. I wanted to show up for you today. I wanted to make sure that you were answered and had the, the, the direction to move forward successfully. So if you're new around here, please do type new in the comments. I would love to meet you. And if you are new, then you don't know me. Hi, I'm Laria Petrucci and I am from Live Streaming Pros where we create or help you create more professional live video that is uniquely you. And this particular show is one I do together with, in partnership with Ecamm Live, and we do it every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Welcome to Go Live Now. All right, e. uh, welcome, welcome. Wow, I see so many new people in the house. Um, okay, I'm just gonna call you guys out real quick before we get on into Q&A. Hello, Aaron, nice to see you. Same bet, hi, thank you so much for being here. Private Market Pros, greetings from Toronto. I love Toronto. Is my all yellow, Eileen? It's no lower than any normal time. Uh, Morris, hi, it's great to see you here. New, as of one second to go. <laughs> James is not new. <laughs> Tim, hi, Matthew, hi. Uh, we've got also Pete in the house who is new. Uh, I love, love, love this exciting stuff. I love to see new people. So. Those of you who are new, uh, please do allow me to kind of walk you through a few things. That was really weird. I felt like somebody walked behind me. There's no one here. Woo, <laughs> ghost. <laughs> um, okay, so I wanna walk you through a few things today. We do actually have um, a, like a few housekeeping things. In terms of an open Q&A, what we would like you to do, as this ticker down here says, um, make sure that you put a Q in front of your questions. That really helps us identify the questions in relation to just conversation that naturally happens in the chat room. And please don't ask your question twice we are gathering them. My team is in both the Ecamm channels as well as the Live Streaming Pros channels, and we are gathering all of your questions. So if I don't get to it quickly, just know that we're gonna have a lot of questions today, and I will get to them as quickly as humanly possible. So don't re-ask that. Super Chats do take priority, just so you guys know. If you need to move fast, you need to get out of here, you have a lunch date or whatever, uh, then just a Super Chat with the question, and I can tackle that and put it to the top. Okay, um, so and now if you did ask a question and you did not put Q in front of it, go ahead at that point, you can ask it twice, but make sure you add that Q. Alrighty, um, so yes, <laughs> Ooh, hold on. Wait, 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 there we go. Uh, brilliant idea to promote clean Q&A just by saying Q. Yeah, we came up with that as we kind of got so overloaded with questions on our Q&As. <laughs> I was like, whoa, whoa. Um, all right, Dave Peterson, real quick, if you can put those questions in the live questions chat, please. Just talking to my team. Okay, so a lot of you, I actually saw a question come through asking, what is Ecamm? So Ecamm is the live software that I use to go live and to produce all of this stuff. So I actually have free training and a free trial for you right here at livestreamingpros.com slash Ecamm, and that will get you um, started down the right path. Um, I'm gonna show you the interface today as I answer questions. So you'll get a sneak peek at what that looks like, but that is how I control all of my live streams. So I'm live four days a week, Tuesday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific. And so I'm constantly 
using and abusing Ecamm Live, which is the software. Now, um, yeah, so I'll answer more questions as we get into. Uh, oh, awesome. Kenneth just got the pro version. Fantastic. I love that. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to not, not push comments while there we go. Let's, let's do that. How's that? All right. So let's get on into it. Uh, Dean says my number one question each week, <laughs> when will Ecamm allow multi-stream directly? Okay. So let me tackle these two things. Um, there is uh one there are two services two integrations that ecamm is currently working on and um they are coming out with these two very soon so just keep an eye on i can't give you a date just yet but we are looking at simulcasting directly in ecamm as opposed to using a third-party software like restream like i am today to go live to four different locations um, and then also they're working on an interview system, a native interview system, so that you don't have to use Skype or another service uh, and that will be all integrated into Ecamm itself. Those are complicated things to integrate. So uh, Glenn and Ken, who are the co-developers and founders of Ecamm Live, they are working their booties off right now for you. So hang tight, hold tight, and uh, that, those will come very soon. So also, uh, I just want to let you know that, that Glenn actually just pushed a new update for Ecamm. So that is out now. And here's what it does. It adds support for Restream's new comments API. So now we can, when I throw... <laughs> Here. Uh, so when I throw a comment like this, before you weren't actually able to see the person's avatar. Uh, so now you can. And um, uh, it also supports, uh, has support for super chats, uh, video monitor. So a confidence monitor and that video monitor feature uh, that is a pro feature will now show live demo mode on the confidence monitor, which I'm so thrilled about because I always forget to go out of live demo mode. Um, and then uh, there was an issue with virtual camera and Chrome. They fixed that. Um, there's a new checkbox for uh, for uh, choosing to use uh, the, the discrete graphics card. La, la, la. The discrete graphics card. That was hard to say. Woo! Uh, and yes, I totally agree. Laz, Ecamm is doing amazing work. Um, so there's a lot of updates in the new one. So if you are using Ecamm currently, go ahead and update that before your next stream. Loving the change with the update. Me too. I've been using the beta with these new updates um, and they're fantastic. So uh, yes. All right. Let's dig into some more questions. Karma, how do you create a ticker in Ecamm? Why don't you let me show you that? All right, so I'm gonna go here and then I'm going to actually go into live demo mode. So this is live demo mode um, and this allows you to see what I'm doing inside of Ecamm. If you've never seen Ecamm before, here you go. Uh, I've got my comments down here. I've got all of my songs that I was playing during the countdown. I've got all of my scenes, meaning when I switch back and forth between my camera and then that, that orange overlay with the ticker, et cetera, et cetera then um, you know how, like, you, that's all there. Um, so those are different scenes. So let me show you. Uh, we're going to add a uh, text overlay. And wait, hold on. Did I forget where it is? Oh, yeah. Here we go. I was like, wait, where's the button? <laughs> overlay style, scrolling ticker. You just go from fixed position to scrolling ticker, and then you can put whatever you want in here your words <laughs> here. I can't type. Uh, and then you can add that. So now you have, voila, a scrolling ticker. So that's how you create a scrolling ticker in Ecamm. There you go. Okay. So uh, now I'm going to get rid of that though. There you go. Um, okay. Uh, Techie, any update on what? Oop, I got to come out of live demo mode. See, that that is a beautiful update right there. Um, spit. Wait, hold on. There was a question from Christelle or earlier before we started. Um, using green screen, great lighting, great effects. I seem to only be able to use it with my FaceTime cam on my Mac. I wasn't able to switch it to my C922 camera. So Christelle, 
I am going to assume that it's a really super simple fix. And let me show you what I mean by this. So in your scenes, you actually have this little lock button. Um, and I don't know for sure because there, there's a lot of details that could be making this a different answer. But see this button of this little lock? If you uncheck that, if you make it unlocked, then you can adjust your cameras. Um, and I'm going to assume in most cases when you can't accomplish something you should be able to, that is what's happening is your scene is just locked. So try that and let me know if that's the case. Okay, uh, spit throw me a bone. Spirit, I always say spit. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm a dork. Spirit, throw me a bone. Uh, is this a new version or an update of Ecamm brand new? I just got pro very recently. It is brand new as of today. So go ahead and update your Ecamm uh, today that they just released it right before the show started. New to live streaming, how do you get to see the chat from YouTube? Um, so I'm using a, well, first and foremost, if you're not simulcast, if you're just going straight to Ecamm, uh, you actually saw that here. So when you go live, um, Ecamm is actually going to pull all of the comments right here in the comment box. And you can access that by going to a uh, window and then your uh, comments and reactions window right here. Uh, and then that will pop up this window and you can see, you know, it's like, I actually, uh, let me just let me grab that. You can resize it, you can make it whatever size you want. I just prefer this layout because it gives me everything I need to see. Um, and then Ecamm just automatically pulls that in if you're going through if you're basically logging into YouTube and going live from there, that's using the API. That's getting a little technical, but um, there are two different ways to uh, you know, connect to your different platforms. Now, if you are actually um, using, if you're using Restream to simulcast, then essentially Restream is throwing those comments over to Ecamm and Ecamm is displaying them for you. Let's see. Uh, Aaron says, Zoom integration, is it possible? Yes. <laughs> that was a very hopeful question, Aaron. Absolutely. Um, so you can either have Zoom on your computer and essentially share that as an input or share the screen and, and, and do that. That may run your CPU way too high. Um, so the alternative is actually bring in Zoom from another computer running through a capture card, and then it's a separate source as a separate camera source seen in Ecamm. So that would be, um, that would be the way to go there. Uh, so yes, it's absolutely possible. Okay, see, I, I knew I was gonna get way behind really fast. So again, if you are just joining us, remember that we're doing open Q&A today about you know Ecamm specifically or any general questions around simulcasting or uh, you know anything else through Ecamm. So uh, I am happy to answer all your questions, but do put Q in front of the question for me so that we can identify it. My team is gathering up all your questions, throwing them to me so that I can see those. Robert says, no, Eddie says, may I know the starting countdown uh, are from Ecamm or other software plugin? Okay, so uh, we actually, so the countdown timers is something that is part Ecamm and part graphics done by somebody else thrown into Ecamm as an overlay. So what I mean by that is the first step is that you actually have to um, create a countdown timer. And we here at Live Streaming Pros, we actually um, uh, created graphics for you. The magical Mr. Paul Dixon created a whole bunch of different uh, graphics, but also countdown timers for you to put into Ecamm yourself. So what that is, is an actual overlay. Um, and it's a, it's a transparent overlay, essentially. It's a movie file. So you put that into Ecamm and then We'll go back here and I wanna show you. Um, and then once you bring the overlay in, then you're going to add in the countdown overlay here. And then you have your countdown overlay and that will do the actual 
uh, the actual counting down part. So there are two different parts. One's integrated into Ecamm and one is integrated into, um, or is, is from a third party source. So uh, you guys can get uh, those if you want. Okay, let's see. Private market pros, when can we use something other than Skype on bringing in guests? I already answered that. They are working hard for you and getting that out the door as quickly as they can. Same bet, can you go into more detail about what's included in the pro membership? Same bet, um, just take a look. So if you go to livestreampros.com slash ecamm, click the link, uh, then you can actually look at the pricing chart and you can see um, each individual section and option for you. And that will give you an idea, uh, a clear indication of exactly what you get in pro. Now, one thing I will say is the pro version, a lot of people want this, is having a confidence monitor, the ability to send your video, what you're sending out to the audience, to another monitor in your studio, like I have. Um, and we did a behind the scenes tour and explained all of that just a couple weeks ago. So you might want to check that out as well on this channel that you're watching this on. So, uh, yeah, so the video monitoring feature, which a lot of people want, that is a pro feature specifically, but there are a bunch more. George, is there a way to get a video from the app without having to download it from the social platform? I think what you mean is the recorded version. So yes, absolutely. All you have to do is you can actually record straight in Ecamm. What I love about Ecamm is that you can record videos. I use this to record my course videos, to record my YouTube videos. I use this to record everything in addition to going live. So you can actually record the video while you're streaming if your computer can handle that CPU uh, load. And so just make sure you test that. <laughs> but also, if you're streaming to YouTube, you can always download that file as well. I would not recommend downloading a file that is has been streamed from Facebook. They, the, the quality of those are just terrible. Terrible, terrible. Okay. Uh, Besetta, um, new from Eugene, Oregon. Awesome! Nice to see you here. Thank you. Uh, Rotilla, do you have an actual green backdrop to take advantage of the different backgrounds? I actually don't use that and I don't recommend green screen. However, I do. I do actually have a green screen, <laughs> but I use that for thumbnails. And so this is not a green screen. This is a physical set. Um, and actually, if you want to learn more about how to set up a physical set cheaply and easily in whatever size space you have available to you, you can go to livestreamingpros.com slash ideas because we have a, we have a PDF uh, guide for you to help you with your backgrounds. So there you go. I, by the way, if you are asking questions, please do type Q in front of that question just to make sure that we can see that and our team can gather that for us. And don't ask your same question twice. Okay, um, so, and by the way, those of you who don't know, like the, so the green screen thing, I don't love people using green screens personally, just because it's very easy to make look amateur. Um, and so I would highly recommend that you uh, do a physical set. However, Ecamm does have the ability to use a green screen and they have built in backgrounds for you to use as well if you choose to do so. Um, I'm having trouble connecting to a Google Sheets page. It says the browser is unsupported. Any chance of getting an updated browser anytime soon? Same bet. I don't think that has anything to do with Ecamm. Um, that would be, yeah, that would be a Google Chrome question, I would assume. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm misunderstanding your question. If so, just let me know. <laughs> yes, exactly. The new version, I just mentioned this uh, at the beginning of the show, is out and updated. So make sure you uh, go download that. Let's see. George, do you need to restream um, to push to multiple platforms? No and yes. <laughs> so simulcasting is a huge um, topic that requires a few little things to know. So first and foremost, simulcasting 
the ability to send one signal to multiple locations like we are today. We're sending it out to four different locations, YouTube and Facebook for Ecamm's channels, and then Ecamm, or sorry, Live Streaming Pros, Facebook and YouTube channels as well. So uh, that is something that you, it depends on your software and it depends on your internet speed. So if your software can handle it, and that is something that vMix on a PC um, handles natively, Ecamm is working on that capability the, to have simulcasting done natively within their program. Um, so that's coming out soon. Then you can do it from the program. However, you need to make sure that your internet speed is good enough. So we recommend 10 megabits per second upload speed per channel you're streaming to. So if I'm going out to four different um, platforms, then I need 40 megabits per second upload speed minimum to make sure that everything is handled correctly and um, doesn't create some buffering or some uh, lag. So that's what you need to know about that. Um, I use Restream through Ecamm because uh, it doesn't yet have that native capability. You can also use Switchboard, um, that, but those are integrated into Ecamm itself. Okay. Let's see. Um, just making sure. <laughs> my, my questions keep like <laughs> scrolling through. Eddie, may I know this? Oh, wait, I already answered that. Robert, can you get the same quality using a software encoder as you would using a hardware encoder like a Teradek? Yes. So you have the ability to, you know, change your quality and everything. So you can't change bitrate within Ecamm. Not yet, anyhow. Um, and uh, you, but you have the ability to set your um, set your quality. So yes, you uh, like that's the way we teach it is to use software. This is the simplest way that you can get super high quality productions um, instead of adding in more hardware into that. Okay, the Roger says the Roger. <laughs> Roger says, uh, live stream on YouTube. I tried to use Keynote for graphics. The stream stopped several times. How can I run a Keynote so I don't overload my MacBook Pro? Oh, 2013. You have a Mac mini um, as well, I guess, maybe. So again, just like Zoom, run that from a separate computer and bring that in as a source through a capture card so that you're not running Keynote and Ecamm and probably trying to record and streaming all on the same computer. Roger also asked, would bringing Keynote in on Mac be, oh uh, yeah, so you do need to bring it in via capture card, not HDMI. Callie, oh no, sorry, I don't know why I just called out Callie. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> okay, lots of questions still coming through. We're getting through. I'm, I'm trying to like power through these guys. We'll, we'll get you. Uh, Phaser says, how to set up two cameras. I have one cam link capture card. Um, the other capture card you recommend in your course is not available. What are your options that still work with Ecamm? So uh, any capture card that you can get is fine at this point. However, there are differences in quality um, and usability through different capture cards. Um, so some of the capture cards that we're recommending are the Elgato Cam Link for sure, the HD60S Plus from Elgato as well. So that's the HD60S Plus. Make sure you get the plus, not the 60. Um, and then the AJU tab, we've actually removed that. Our students were actually having some problems with that. All of a sudden there were like some problems with the AJU taps. So we've taken that off our recommended list for now. And then also um, we have, a, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, we have a couple of really cheap capture cards coming to test. So we'll update you on those as soon as we know. Um, you know, mage wells are something that a lot of people use. We don't love their quality, but uh, you know, you can, whatever you can get at this point, <laughs> right? <laughs> and by the way, what he was talking about with um, the course is this studio workshop where at Live Streaming Pros, we walk you through everything you need to know about how to set up your studio. We get you started with no gear necessary, um, get you going quickly and easily, and then we walk you through how to, what lights to get, what cameras to get, what all of the pieces are, 
how to set that up. We even give you diagrams that show you where everything plugs into everything else. And then we also teach you how to set up your background as well. So if you're interested in that, you can head on over to their livestreamingpros.com slash studio to grab that. Okay. Uh, back to the questions. They keep popping. They keep popping. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Got it. Wrestling on weed. Everything keeps like scrolling up. Uh, how do you connect your second monitor to an iMac Pro when using an HDMI switcher, HDMI to USB-C on the Mac or HDMI to HDMI on the switcher? Um, second monitor to an iMac Pro when using an HDMI switcher. Uh, HDMI to USB-C on the Mac. Yeah, you can do that. HDMI to the switcher. I would plug it, plug it directly into the Mac. I see what you're saying. So what do you plug it into the switcher or do you plug it into the Mac? Plug it into the Mac um, if you can. Uh, Spirit, but with Ecamm, all the comments instead of just one. Yeah, I think if I remember your earlier question, Spirit, uh, you are definitely going to um, get all of the comments that you're streaming to through Ecamm. So if you're simulcasting to multiple locations, Ecamm will see all of the questions being pulled from all of the different platforms. Kenneth, how do you duplicate text overlay for the same style so I can just change the information? That actually doesn't exist as far as I'm aware. Um, what you can do, however, um, is create a second scene. So I, I was going through this the other day as well, Kenneth. Um, and so if you have a, uh, like a ticker, right? Or a text overlay of any kind, what you'll wanna do instead of duplicating this, um, then what you'll wanna do is hit this button right here, which duplicates the scene. And I'm assuming you don't want two text overlays on a single scene. That's not possible as far as I'm aware and Katie can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but uh, yeah, so I would duplicate the scene and then you're good to go. You can just change out the information on that separate scene. Sound like a plan, Kenneth? <laughs> All right. Um, Lisa says, can I use my Panasonic GH5 and Ecamm without a capture card? So Ecamm actually has a list of, it's, it's a crowdsourced from the community of Ecamm, uh, of a list of cameras that can work via USB. Now, there are some cameras that can work without a capture card. Uh, you can plug them in directly to USB. Not every camera works. For example, my camera, which is the Sony A5100, does not work via USB. Uh, so you need to look at that list and make sure that you compare the camera that you're looking for with the list, and then you'll know. Or you could just plug it in via USB and see if it works. <laughs> There's always that option, is just to test it yourself. But um, also know that if you do run it through USB, you are going to have a lower quality. But right now, it's either a USB webcam if you have one or your onboard mic, since you can't really get capture cards at the moment. So that's a perfect in-between option, right? Oh, fantastic. So Ecamm just uh, put their link in the comments. So if our team uh, can grab Dave uh, Peterson, if you can grab this link and put it into the LSP uh, comments as well, I'd appreciate that. Okay. I use my, okay. Uh, Crystal, if you are using StreamYard, what are the reasons for also using Ecamm? I would, so StreamYard is a level two software. Ecamm is a level three software, which means it's higher quality. It's uh, got uh, so many more options. Um, and so you have, you have these different uh, levels. So level one is the phone. And these are the four levels of live streaming pro, uh, live streaming that uh, we at Live Streaming Pros uh, teach. And so level one is the phone, quick and easy to get started, right? Level two is something like StreamYard or just going live from the browser. And that is super easy to get started. Like almost no learning curve. But it's also a really easy way to do interviews, but it's very low quality because it's cloud-based. Level three with Ecamm on a Mac or VMAX on a PC, you're looking at all of the quality that you can get. <laughs> this is where you're able to step it up to level four, adding in some accessories to make it an easier production, but you're able to get much higher quality. So it, it's not for also using, it would be 
either or. German, what difference uh, Ecamm the other software free? So that that's what I just I just uh, kind of answered that same question. Patrick, what you described was bringing Zoom into Ecamm. What about Ecamm into Zoom? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Did I misunderstand your earlier question, Patrick? My apologies. So uh, yes, you can send your full signal like this whole thing with my graphics and my ticker and my countdown timer and all of that into Zoom. Um, and all you need is the virtual cam option. So let me show you this. Um, so in, uh, sorry, output, um, uh, you've got virtual cam right here and you would just make sure that that's on. That is a pro feature. So just be aware of that. Uh, but yeah, that's how you send your full production into Zoom. David says, can you change the interface of the comments when displayed during broadcast? Yes, you can. Um, you have, uh, here, let me throw a comment here. <laughs> and uh, same thing for Skype as well, by the way, guys. Uh, you do, I think still at this point, you need to use uh, the older version of Skype. I think Skype still has not updated their new version um, to allow for virtual cams. But yeah, so if you double click, you can actually change the font. You, oops, I'm not showing you. <laughs> Live demo mode. Okay, so um, if you change, if you double click the comment itself, the box, you'll be able to change all of the colors and all of the things, uh, fonts, et cetera, et cetera, uh, right here in Ecamm. So there you go. Let's see what else we got. Chris, does Ecamm offer any time shifting capabilities? You mean delays? Oops, sorry. Do you mean, can you re-ask that question? Because I want to make sure that, you, that I have the correct, I think what you're asking is like a delay essentially. Um, so that if somebody like cusses or something, then you can delay the output. Um, if that's the case, no, but just let me know if there's, if, uh, if I'm missing that question. Ricardo, what do you use NDI output for a virtual cam? So uh, you could send uh, you know, your audio or video monitoring through NDI to a separate device. Um, virtual cam is for what I was just describing by sending your whole production into Zoom or Skype, for instance. So yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Schmidtless says, Ecamm is an amazing product. I've been getting many, many compliments since I launched my channel from guests and viewers. Yay, I'm so glad that it's it's helping engage. And that's the thing, is when you actually, you know, put people, you have the capabilities and you have the more professional look, that is what happens, is you actually get more engagement, you get more viewers because they're attracted to the professionalism and they, you know, you can put people's comments up on screen. You can call them out. You can have conversations. You can do so much when you set yourself up with the right software, with the right graphics, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, uh, Marty, I saw you just joined. So I'm gonna ask you to read down here. <laughs> I know you joined late, totally fine. Uh, but if you have questions, please do type Q in the in front of your question just to make sure we can see that and ask, answer it. Tim says, I can't seem to get Zoom to recognize my Canon DSLR even in Ecamm. That is prop, wait, Zoom to recognize me. Are you using? A like so so not every camera works for live streaming, works as a webcam. So like some there there are not every camera you can use. Uh, let me just put it like that. So you do need to make sure it's live streaming capable, uh, meaning that you don't that you have clean HDMI. You're not going to see the uh, screen menu items on the cam the the output that's going out like. If I had all my camera settings, that would be really bad, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, um, let's keep going. Ah. Uh, Doug, hey, Larius. So, well, hey, Doug. So when I share my desktop, uh, when sharing Zoom into Ecamm Live, the shared desktop does not show up in Ecamm or YouTube, but does in Facebook. Hold on. <laughs> Let me reread this. So you're doing, uh, you're sharing Zoom into Ecamm, you're sharing Zoom into Ecamm Live, 
the shared desktop does not show up in Ecamm or YouTube, but does in Facebook. You mean when you're sending it out to both YouTube and Facebook at the same time, it shows up in Facebook, but not YouTube? Or do you mean that you're sending it, like if you do a single stream to Facebook? Can you clarify that for me? All right, James, how do you make uh, new scenes for everything or do you just switch cameras pip on the fly? So what I do, I have a whole video all about run, the run of show and the production flow. I would highly recommend watching that because it was packed full of really good information, if I do say so myself. <laughs> so um, these, these are all the scenes. And so this is my countdown. This is my main camera, right? These are each different scenes that we have available to us. My shared screen, my call to action, right? So like all of these different things are scenes. And so um, then I run um, Stream Deck and oh, here we go. Then I run Stream Deck and I set up my physical device uh, to match the scenes that I've set up over here. So that is um, kind of how I do that. And you know, you do not, do not, do not, do not want to run everything on the fly. That would be a terrible idea <laughs> because you would be having to do everything like while people are watching. So absolutely set yourself up for success for a smooth production uh, beforehand. Then how can I transfer all scenes and assets from Eclaim Live to one computer to another? Oh, I love this answer because this is something that most people don't know. And in fact, actually somebody was asking in the Ecamm group about this yesterday. So um, there is this button that most people don't seem to see. If you click on your folder, like, so this is my folder, go live now, right? And I have my full production, everything in there. Then just click this button, the export button save that as a file and you're going to get a .ecamm live file that you can then just move on over to the other computer, click, double click that, it'll load into Ecamm and all of your stuff will be there. Um, now there may be a few things that you need to just make sure are adjusted or anything like that, but there you go. Uh, if we can get James and everybody else a link to the run of show video, um, I don't remember exactly what the title of that one is, but I believe it's production flow or run of show team. Um, that would be awesome. Carnell can use, ah, <laughs> can you Skype and share videos at the same time? Skype and share videos, of course. Yeah, these are just different scenes. So if you wanna have a Skype call going on and then you also wanna load in a pre-recorded video that you play, those are just gonna be two different scenes that you set up. And a scene, just for clarification purposes, a scene is actually a collection of assets. And when I say assets, I mean this thing, the overlay, the ticker, right? The countdown timer, if that's it, Skype interview, all of these different things are assets. And so you put all of the assets for the scene in one scene, and then you create another scene that, that basically sets up a completely different view, right? So I've got my same camera, but now I have my lower third. And in this one, I have just the main camera, but I also have a super chat overlay that would pop up over here if somebody super chatted. And then over here, I have two different assets. I have three different assets, the camera, the overlay, and the ticker. So hopefully that helps you kind of think about that a little differently. Uh, Lazvik, uh, does Ecamm support Streamlab widgets for Twitch alerts? Yeah, actually I just mentioned that, right? So um, we have uh, Streamlabs, uh, not Stream Elements. Well, it does actually support Stream Elements, um, but uh, we've, we're, I'm working with Glenn on Stream Elements. Um, it's just a little buggy, but Streamlabs, absolutely. And if somebody does want a super chat just to see it working, that will pop up right over here. <laughs> I'm not trying to get you to super chat. I'm just saying there is, <laughs> that is integrated into this production even. Nathan, can I use a JPEG instead of a scene? So Nathan, um, hopefully what I just described 
answered that question about how scenes work and what assets are. So a JPEG file would be an asset in your production, in a scene. Does that make sense? If not, Nathan, please do let me know. Yay! <laughs> I'm glad that you're learning and that this is helpful. Is this helpful to anybody else? Are you guys having a good time? Uh, please do type Q in front of your questions if you've joined late uh, so that we can see those as questions. And please don't re-ask the same question twice. Okay, uh, let's see. Wait, wait, wait just a second. The widget. Did the widget not go here? I think the widget is there. Wait, hold on, I need to unlock real quick. One thing, everybody always does this. Um, if you're trying to make changes to your scenes, just know that uh, if your scene is locked, I mentioned this earlier, uh, then you will potentially not actually, um, you will not actually be making changes in your scene. So make sure that's unlocked and then lock it again when you're done. Carol, will uh, when will the Inside Ecamm ha uh, interview uh, be happening? Are we close? Yes, we're they're working on it very uh, very soon. Is all I can say. I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to say anything else. Very very soon. Okay, they are working hard on it. It's really all they're working on at the moment. Uh, do actually that and the other update. Uh, James. Oh. It'll pop up here. There we go. Yay, Jermaine. See, there you go. Streamlabs uh, integration right there. So Jermaine, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Just wanted everybody to see the pop up. Appreciate you, Jermaine. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a good question. What did I do to you people? 10 people just disliked it? What? <laughs> uh, we have another super chat. Thank you, Kathleen. Your tech coach treats for Abby. Appreciate that. All right, now you guys have seen the stream labs integration. Uh, James says, "Do live stream off beta? Do you live stream off beta or stable?" <laughs> so it depends on how risk adverse you are. Okay, my personal um, experience with Ecamm's betas are that they are actually very stable but they will have, I mean, that's a point of a beta that you will find bugs here and there. So it depends on if you're okay with that going out into your live production. For most people who are not super technical, I would advise just using the, the regular uh, Ecamm production. But if you can handle things going wrong or you know, you're know you able to deal with that on the fly and you feel confident, uh, then absolutely. I love the betas because I get to play with new features early. Uh, Pete, I'm experiencing problems using Ecamm and Skype. It starts off really good, but starts freezing after 15 minutes into the program. I even purchased a new computer iMac. Okay, so... Um, there are a lot of different things that could cause the problem. Um, make sure your Skype is updated or the latest version of Skype if you're trying to use virtual cam into Skype at all. Um, yeah, I know, right, Jermaine? Yeah, they're very normally very stable. Um, so the it freezing can definitely be a issue with your computer, your your CPU your CPU load, the the graphics load, all of that. If you just purchased a new computer, my question would be, what specs did you get? Um, did you get the right specs? Um, and we have a whole video where I interviewed Glenn, who is the co-founder of Ecamm, where uh, we talked about specs and we talked about what you need in a new computer. So first and foremost, a new iMac should do the trick, even the lower versions. But um, if you're, if you're, if you're having that those problems, then make sure that you don't have background syncing going on on Google Drive or Dropbox, things like that. Is your internet speed okay? Uh, are you, do you have 10 megabits per second upload speed? There are all of these different things that can make a stream go wrong. So I talked in depth about this concept of a tech chain. So the live streaming tech chain, everything has to be on par, up to date, excellent quality in order for everything to go right for your stream, right? And even then, you know, who knows, right? Because <laughs> it's live. <laughs> That's why we get good at rolling with the flow. But um, I would highly recommend watching that tech chain 
a video so that you can learn more about all of the things that might be going wrong. Eric, uh, which NDI to iPhone do you use? Just ask without question. Sorry for you. No, Eric, no problem, Eric. Um, so NDI to iPhone. So what I'm actually, so bringing in the iPhone, you mean? Uh, because you said that the opposite way, but I think what you mean is go is bringing the iPhone into your Ecamm production as a camera source. And what I'm doing there is Epoch Cam, and Ecamm actually has a tutorial page on what you need to know and where to download e Epoch Cam. That's actually been working incredibly well for us. I did a whole behind the scenes tour. I've done several behind the scenes um, things with bringing that camera in. Uh, so I would um, download that. There are a few different ways that you can bring it in for sure, uh, but that is one. And I needed it to be wireless for walking around this whole basement to show behind the scenes. Greg, will countdown timers automatically call up the next uh, scene in a sequence? So here, let me show you this because that's actually a really good question. What you need to do is make sure that you have, so see how I have the countdown timer here, and then I have the main camera as the next scene. So make sure that you have that flow correctly. And then um, when you're in the countdown timer, hold tight. There we are. Okay. So, so in the scene here of the countdown timer, um, what you need to do is just double click, oh, un unlock, <laughs> double click. And then this button is what you need to, to check. Go to next scene when finished. If that is not checked, it will not do that, but make sure that that is checked and you are good to go. All right. Coming back. Um, okay, so what camera model and lenses are you using? Do you use LUTs, Howie? Uh, so this, oops, hold on. Hold on, I'm in live demo mode. <laughs> I love my new live demo mode confidence monitor. Thank you, Glenn. Okay, so uh, this is my live streaming setup. You can go to livestreampros.com slash GLN to find all of the links to all of that. But um, no, I do not use LUTs. So I'm using a Canon 50, A51, sorry, not a Canon at all. A Sony A5100 with a 50 millimeter lens. I do not recommend the 50 millimeter lens for everybody. Just FYI, if you have your camera closer than I do, uh, you can get by with the 16 millimeter lens in most cases. Uh, Andy, I couldn't find the loop setting on sound effects. Some said cause it was uh, cause of Mac, Hi, Sierra. Nope. Here you go. Live demo mode again. All right. So in your countdown music here, um, hey, what happened to the loop? Wait, what happened to the loop? <laughs> oh, there it is. I was like, I thought it was, uh, sorry, I'm having a brain fart. A moment. Okay, so right here, uh, you're going to click on the folder or the individual uh, song and click this button. Make that loop and then you are good to go. <laughs> I was like, I was thinking it was like not in the gear. My silliness. Whoop, out of live demo mode. Okay, perfect. Let's move on. Adam. Hi from Israel. Hi, Adam. I have Ecamm Pro on Facebook. How many pages can I live post at the same time and how? So I spoke to that earlier. Hopefully you, you got, uh, you learned about simulcasting from my conversation earlier. Um, but that is going to happen through like Restream or, um, natively soon in Ecamm. Um, so you can use a service like Restream to basically send a single signal out and then Restream actually spreads the love <laughs> once they receive the signal. And in terms of how many you get, you can do, that's on Restream side of how many they allow based on the plan that you choose. So you just need to check out Restream.io or Switchboard um, and that will determine the pricing that you pay for how many out. Uh, Crystal, during my church live stream, I played a video with the choir singing and the sound was distorted. Uh, I use a scene with a movie source. Would it be best to play the video from an iPhone and add that as another camera? No. Um, so a couple of things could be happening. 
One, do you have echo cancellation on? Uh, that's important. And then um, if your sound is distorting, I, I would think that maybe what you're talking about is kind of an echo effect, and that would be echo cancellation. Make sure that's turned on in your sound uh, window panel. And if that's not the case, then um, post in the Ecamm community or, or reach out to support. I'm not, I'm not sure why else that would be happening, but I'm going to guess that that will fix your problem. Shyly, is there animated lower thirds and can we import our own? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You can import your own. Um, so they, they do not have natively integrated into Ecamm. There are not animated uh, lower thirds, but you can create your own and then you can load those in as an, as a video file. So when you're choosing, uh, when you're choosing the overlay to bring in, add animated overlay, and then you're going to have a video, right? And then it'll ask, do you want to, uh, full play full screen with audio? And that would be what you would do for a video file. Uh, or add an animated overlay, and that would be that file, that animation. Okay, uh, let's come back out of that demo mode. Okay, Carol, if your internet provider, oh, and by the way, uh, I saw a few conversations happening about um, these graphics and the timer and where to get them. Um, that is something that we at live streaming pros, uh, do have available to you guys. So you can get a full overlay pack. Um, Paul Dixon just created those. We released them this week. Um, so you can get like several different styles. Um, and I think it's 19 different overlays in a single package that you're purchasing. So livestreampros.com slash store, that's where you get the things that you see me doing if you don't wanna create your own. So that should be super helpful for just getting the job done. Whoa! <laughs> Creep, creepy kitty. Creepy kitty just fell. <laughs> Sorry, creepy. <laughs> I just droop. Um, all right, Jeff. Uh, oh wait, no, I didn't answer Carol. If your internet provider cannot get you high speed, is there a booster you can boost? I'm uh, using, I'm stuck using five to nine upload speed. Drives me nuts. So, um, so not really. I mean, I, you can look into boosters, but. Um, nine megabits per second upload speed should do you fine for a single stream. And if you need to simulcast, then just use, <laughs> then just use a service like Restream, like I am today. Creepy's fine. He's going to be okay. I think. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, geez. Let's see. Jeff, new. Jeff Corson is new. Hi, Jeff. Is there a way to split screen both a camera source and an NDI source? Um, sorry, I lost my pres my, my, my uh, place there. Okay. Split screen, both a camera source and an NDI source present that's not from a camera. We know we can split screen two camera sources. No problem. We cannot find a way to split the NDI from pro presenter and our live camera. Um, you might be able to use the PIP um, feature to do that. Like that's how some, I bring in some of my overlays. I've not done that with an NDI source that's not being seen as a camera source, but an NDI source should be showing up in your camera sources list. Um, so because, because let me go here. So you're, when you bring in an NDI source, it should be showing in the here, um, it, it should be showing in here. See how I have like NDI, right? So um, include in switcher NDI, and then you have this, and you can um, throw that up. Well, I don't have anything connected, so it's not going to be able to throw it up. But um, that that would be what I would uh, recommend trying. If that's not working, then try using like the PIP um, in order to. Uh, see if you can bring that source in via a PIP shared desktop or something. Um, that's how I kind of bring in um, some of my animated overlays. Um, does Ecamm use less CPU than OBS? Um, yeah, so Ecamm actually really relies hard on the um, the graphics card, the, the accelerated, 
it's a long term. Um, uh, the accelerated graphics processor, so, or the uh, that that card, um, and so they actually don't use as much CPU. Um, but other things like sources and things like that, um, the Skype interview, uh, shared desktop screen, that's all going to use CPU as well. So um, yes, the, yes the, the answer is yes, but I would also suggest you watch the video that I did with Glenn, uh, where we talk in depth about how they use the system resources. Sandy, how easy is it to add remote contributors to an Ecamm stream? Yeah, just uh, through Skype. So uh, at the moment, Skype is your best bet or Zoom um, through a separate computer, I would recommend uh, bringing that in as a camera source like I recommended earlier. And um, yeah, so uh, very easy. And then you just bring them in as another camera. MMM, <laughs> is there a way to send your live stream directly from Ecamm to your own website? Absolutely. First of all, ask yourself, why do you want to do that? Is it a private stream, a webinar type thing? Then that's okay. If you're trying to get people to join you on your website to watch your streams, that's honestly typically not the best scenario um, because you're forcing people to go out of their habit when they're on social platforms. Just something to think about. But the technical answer is you can use YouTube unlisted and embed that in your webpage. Uh, you can use Vimeo Live, um, which gives you a lot more controlled access to it. Uh, and that embeds into your, your website. So there are different options available to you from that perspective, but those are the two that I would recommend depending on how much you wanna pay. <laughs> Same bet says the browser Google Sheets issue. Yeah, yeah, coming back to that, is when I use the overlay widget with a URL to my Google Sheets. Oh, when I enter the URL, it tries to launch the Sheets, but says the browser. That I would say um, would need to be an Ecamm specific question uh, because um, as far as I know, there's no issue with that. Danny Donuts, uh, how can I go live on a Facebook business page that I am not an admin for? They used to have a, a feature and I haven't seen it in a while. Let me just take a quick look at something here. Where is it? Okay, cross-posting. Yes, it is, it is actually still available. Okay, so cross-posting is something that Facebook allows uh, where you can have the admin of that page allow cross-posting from your page. So what that means is essentially it's kind of like simulcasting. However, it's a native Facebook functionality and what they um, do is they actually split up the comments. So you're not gonna, ha so that's the same signal going out to the two different pages, but the comments are actually separate. So you will need to pay attention to comments on both pages. Um, but yeah, that's how you would do it, uh, is that you would just set up your uh, cross-posting. Both pages have to accept the cross-posting capabilities, just so you know. Oh, uh, real quick, since we were talking about countdown timers, uh, where do I get the music? I get the music from Epidemic Sound. Um, Epidemic Sound is our favorite place because we've tried all of the services and we've never gotten copyright uh, claims or strikes from Epidemic Sound. Um, plus they have freaking amazing music. Uh, so livestreamingpros.com slash music is where you get the music and that's a 30 day free trial. So just sign up, check out the music. If you don't like it, you don't have to keep using it. There you go. Okay, um, coming back. Okay, Sudanto, Sudanto, am I saying your name right? Uh, YouTube was complaining about a lower than recommended bit rate this morning, despite Ecamm being set on high quality video mode. Any suggestions? Um, I know that YouTube has had some various just random issues lately with that kind of stuff, but um, I would actually uh, check on the YouTube settings side and, and see if everything looks correct there. Um, but yeah, you shouldn't be having that problem. If it continues, it might just be a bug. 
Um, and, but if it does happen again, um, maybe just uh, either reach out to the, you know, first of all, I would say reach out to Ecamm uh, support or post in the group. Um, I think the posting in the group um, is, is great because it frees up the customer support team and the community there is just amazing. Uh, they might have another idea. Eric, is there a way to get the Ecamm windows floating above other program windows without recording in Ecamm? You have some settings. Hold on. I think what you're asking for is in the preferences screen sharing here um, because uh, you can show everything when sharing the entire screen. Uh, you can, uh, hold on, where's the, the one that I was looking for? Include desktop icons. You're looking to uh, have Ecamm windows floating above other. Yeah, there. that is somewhere in here. Hold on. Uh, I'm just looking to see if there's any. There, It, it is somewhere in here. I, I promise you that. <laughs> oh, keep utility windows in front of. Uh, there you go. That was the one. Uh, in general, keep utility windows in front while live. Um, and so hopefully that helps answer that. So that's what it's doing. Woo! All right. Uh, Shyly, can you recommend capture cards for users? I just covered that. So hopefully you hear, you heard me answer that question. Uh, if Ecamm is level three, then what's level four software? So Ecamm is Ecamm and vMix are level three softwares. When you go to level four, what you're doing is adding some accessories. Um, you're adding more capabilities uh, to your production, like the Stream Deck, for example. Um, this actually allows you to have a full TV quality production because you're taking your scenes in Ecamm, adding them this to this tactile feedback you know, uh, device, and so that you can switch things. So I can go to my main cam, I can come back here, right? I can do all of the things through this. Um, and so there are a lot of different things that you can set yourself up for, for a more professional, more streamlined um, setup. So it's the gear um, added to the whole production. Hopefully that makes sense. Rebecca, can you bring on guests that are using their phone to Ecamm through Skype? Absolutely. I do it all the time with David when he's traveling. Uh, the Ocean Adventure, what would cause dropped frames in a streaming video on Ecamm through Zoom using 2018 MacBook Pro, 16 gigabyte i5? There are a lot of things. <laughs> so like I was saying to the other person uh, earlier about the tech chain, um, there are a lot of different things that can affect the quality and dropped frames from the internet to the computer that you're using. Um, if you're 16 gigabit i5, you, 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 may, you may need an i7 processor, right? So like you have, and, and also the amount that you're loading into your production. So uh, the more you add, the more likely you are to have a, a problem if your computer isn't able to handle that. So the tech chain video that I did just last week, I would highly recommend watching that um, because it, it talks about all of the different pieces. <laughs> Excuse me, swallowed wrong. Uh, is there an air turn pedal we can easily switch scenes instead of clicking? Um, well, the stream yard you just saw, there are pedals available uh, that you should be able to use as well. Hold on, I've got to... <laughs> I've got to get rid of this. <laughs> I, my my, my uh, controls were, were showing up. Okay. Um, how do you bring in individual comments versus all the comments? Well, you see me posting individual comments. So I'm not sure what you're asking. Can you clarify that question for me? Jemaine, did you say that, did you say that the preview mode is now available in beta? Can you show us where that is? So preview mode, no, no, it's not available in beta, no. Um, as far as I know, I haven't seen 
uh, preview mode come out just yet. I cannot wait until preview mode comes out, but as far as I know, they're still working on that. Martin, I've run a quick test with the virtual cam and Teams and it worked. Uh, looks like there will be challenges with screen size and chat. Any tips? Loving the potential. I've run a quick test with virtual cam and Teams and it worked. Looks like there will be challenges with screen sizes and chat. I don't know what you're having a problem with there, Martin. If you're setting it up correctly in Ecamm, then you shouldn't have any problem um, with sizes. Can you clarify that for me a little bit? Um, but uh, one thing to note is probably Teams, just like Zoom, compresses and then also kind of zooms in. It's weird because um, I've done webinars through using like Ecamm, sending that to Zoom, and then Zoom actually like zooms in a little bit, interestingly enough. Um, and so you kind of cut off the sizes or the sides. Um, so that may be what you're describing if Teams does the same thing. Daniel, when using Ecamm for an interview uh, using Skype, does the local recording separate the audio tracks between you and your guest for later editing? Or is it one mixed audio track married to the video? Um, yeah, as uh, I don't think that there's a... Um, as far as I know, and maybe somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll take a look. Uh, you actually um, are getting one mixed signal as opposed to individual audio tracks. Marty, um, okay, can you uh, can you advise the how Ecamm remembers the order of Skype guests when I set up scenes and test it all hours ahead, then go to my show, they never are the same, and we have to scramble to load up guests into their window with the nameplates. Um, I'm assuming that everybody, that you're disconnecting the Skype call uh, between testing. Yeah, so I would say one, when I when we run um, virtual events and, and things like that, we always, you know, test. And then we also um, like set aside, you know, an hour uh, before the show to make sure that everything is working properly. Uh, so as far as I'm aware, you can't force Skype to remember that because it's a new call. I'm assuming you're just having a new call. So that's your problem. So as soon as you get it set up the day of, do not let anybody off that call. Um, be very clear with them. They need to stay on that call. They can go do other stuff, but keep that call active. So that would, it, it, it shouldn't be changing things up midstream. Let me know if there's a difference. Uh, ben, I never thought of editing a person during an interview. If they use an expletive, how do we do that? Oh, that they, you can't using Ecamm. And I would say it's not necessary. Uh, George, possible to have clickable links on the screen? No, that's a platform issue. So um, the platforms don't allow for that. However, Facebook is working on a QVC style live stream where they will have clickable buttons um, so look forward to that. I don't know when that's coming out, but that, they have announced that. Um, Cosmic Harry, I can't get sounds to work in my Ecamm Live for Super Chats. Uh, are, you, are you getting everything set up in Streamlabs uh, properly? And do you, have, um, do you have the sounds from the system going out? Uh, because there is a system sounds in the preferences. So uh, check that mode. Nikki, if I'm restreaming to YouTube and Facebook, do I have to use the stream size standard 720? Uh, no, absolutely not. I'm using 1080 today. So I'm not sure why you would think that you needed to, but um, yeah, if you're using restream, you should be good to go with 1080. Uh, the Ocean Adventure, are you on Ecamm high quality video mode setting? Um, yes, I believe so. Video. Do, 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 do. We need like hold music. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I am using high quality video mode. Um, I'm not sure why you're having those issues. I'm thinking it's a bug. Ricky, how can I add more sound effects in Ecamm? Let me show you. Um, okay, so your, your sound effects or your music 
uh, go in the sound effects panel here and you access that by going to window sound effects. Um, and then all you need to do is click this plus button, boom, load in your music that you have on your computer or your sound effects, uh, because Ecamm has uh, sound effects that are loaded uh, natively. I've deleted them because I don't use them, but um, you, when you load up Ecamm, you'll have sound effects brought in here. But you can, um, Epidemic Sound is actually a great place to get sound effects as well. Uh, so not only do we use it for the music, we also use it for sound effects if we need it. We don't often use sound effects, but yeah, so you can get them there. You can download them from the internet. You can get them anywhere, but that's how you load them in. Just click that plus button or drag and drop. Boom. Joel, do you have a video of how to use a Camlink 4K to get Zoom from a separate laptop. I believe we do, actually. Our moderators can look that link up, please, and get that to you. Susan, is it acceptable to pin your Venmo account on Ecamm Live? I don't know what you mean. Pin your Venmo account on Ecamm Live. Can you clarify? Is that for donations? Is that what you're thinking? Um, if you're, and what do you mean by pin? Just, I just need a little clarification on that, Susan. Billy, um, but I, I, let me just answer what I think you're saying. Um, I think what you're saying is like, put your Venmo account like on the screen for donations. Um, you absolutely can if, you're, if your community is uh, you know, willing to support you. You do have to have an audience. You have to have provided them value in order for anybody to want to donate to you. Um, and I would treat that as a separate scene, just from a strategic standpoint. Um, you can do whatever you want, but you can certainly put like a little graphic with the Venmo account, like tips or whatever um, throughout the entire stream. Um, but you could also treat it as a call to action and set up a separate scene where you have a promotion for that and you talk about why um, they should and, and what you're gonna do with that money. Are they going, are you, is it going to help support is it going to help um further your live stream capabilities further the ability of the, of you helping your audience more like what you need to make sure that they understand why they should even uh support you in the first place okay susan says yes uh put vimo on screen thank you you are very welcome um, Billy, can I live stream to both Facebook and YouTube? Oh, I, I answered that like multiple times, Billy. Hopefully you've heard the answer to that. Stacy, do I need to the pro account to have my virtual cam feature work in? Yes, you do. Um, so virtual camera is a pro feature. Stacy, do, oh, I just answered that. Silly me. Ricky, I'm setting up my stream lab for the first time today. Can you show a 30 second setup for how you assign actions? Um, in stream labs, um, no, not right now. Um, I am working on full tutorials for that. So in our studio workshop, uh, we will be updating all my brand new tutorials uh, very soon. So I will have like a stream lab set up, um, how to bring that into Ecamm and a basic um, you know, training on how to set up stream labs uh, for that. So look forward to that. Patrick got NDI from PP6. Do I need special placements of lyrics? PowerPoint? Is PP6 PowerPoint? Um, I don't know the answer to that, Patrick. Um, you might want to post that in the, because I don't do anything with lyrics. So I don't know kind of what service you're using to bring in those lyrics. Are those separate? Are they in PowerPoint? I'm not sure uh, how to answer that one. Shiley, in Singapore, we're requested to record our videos in 25 or 50 when we stream in, from uh, SG. Does it affect the stream if the standard setting is 30 frames per second when we broadcast the videos? Oh, um, yeah, like different. It shouldn't. If I understand your question correctly, it shouldn't. Um, <laughs> yes, that's that's exactly what I was just talking about. So I'm I'm updating my training videos to include this uh, purpose. Sandy, is Ecamm better than Wirecast? 
1000% yes. <laughs> Um, so we actually used to have a course teaching you how to use Wirecast and we pulled it. It was selling really well. This was years ago, but um, we pulled it because we became tech support. Wirecast was very buggy for most people and it wasn't, um, it wasn't a solid system. And, you know, I'm sure they've done updates, um, but overall we we don't trust Wirecast to be a solid performer without a lot of issues like we do Ecamm. Ecamm is super solid. So the reason that we recommend the softwares that we recommend is because they work for the majority of people and they work seamlessly. Live streaming is never seamless in general, but, um, but like from a software perspective, we need that to be a super solid, super reliable system for our students, for us, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why we recommend Ecamm over things, uh, uh, any other software on the market. Pedro, in your overlays, the PIP overlay has an area from shared desktop and two areas for PIP. How can I use them? So it, you actually bought, so, um, you actually bought one of these, correct? I believe that's what you're saying. In my overlays, uh, the PIP overlay has an area for a shared desktop and two areas for PIP, like two cameras. How can I use them? I actually, in here, we have a demo video where I literally showed you how to load in that two camera PIP. So watch that tutorial video um, and we've got you taken care of from there, uh, just so you know. I also show you how to show, how to do the four PIP style as well. And this is what I'm talking about. Hold tight, please. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, what I'm talking about here. Uh, so we have the four pips. These are, these are what we provide you in the graphics package. Um, all of these different styles and stuff. Um, it doesn't have powered by Ecamm, by the way, that's mine. Um, but this is what you're talking about, the two cameras. So basically you're just, you're adding in a second camera and it, you make sure that it's tall, set to tall. The camera source is set to tall. Um, and then it'll load itself in. It's actually pretty uh, easy once you know what to do. Okay. Um, no, so TL, I just want to cover this since we were talking about softwares. Uh, e Ecamm, you can record and you can go live. Like that's what I love so much about it. I record it, all my YouTube videos through Ecamm. I record all my course videos through Ecamm. I record, um, all the things through Ecamm. And when you set yourself up for a solid setup with live streaming, you actually have all of the capabilities for any other content you want to produce. Uh, I can have, uh, can you have a loop video in the background? Billy Richard wants to know with a PNG overlay with cutouts to the PNG to place to vid interview. Can you have a video loop in the background with a PNG? Well, so we actually have, I, what I think you're saying is something like this. See how this is animated? That's the video file that is animated. So yeah, you can definitely do that. Would love to know if you found a mic stand for the Samsung you recommend. We don't recommend a Samsung mic. I don't know which one you're talking about. Let me know. Bruce, my only question is not uh, Ecamm related, but what are those lights David has behind him that he can control with Google? I'm intrigued. Um, those are in our kits uh, at kit.co slash live streaming pros. They're the nano leaf um, lights. Tish, how do you achieve your lighting setup without appearing dark? Epic failure for me. Uh, lighting is uh, all, so I have three lights on me. Um, one, because I do have a darker background. Um, and so I need to really front load that lighting in order for me to be separated from the background in order for me to be lit well. So lighting is, um, depending on, depends on how you have your studio set up, but we cover that in our studio workshop as well. Um, but yeah, so if your lighting is too far from you, 
then you need more of it. Uh, so I have a, a ring light. You can see this all in the behind the scenes video I did a couple weeks ago or last week. Um, uh, I have a, a ring light that's five, six, seven feet away from me. Uh, and that's too far. So that would be dark without these other two lights that I have pointing at me. So you just need to maybe add more lights, get it closer to you, adjust until you get that, um, that beautiful light. Karma, what other locations are you streaming to besides YouTube and Facebook? Actually for this show, we actually just uh, go live to YouTube and Facebook. Um, but we're streaming to Ecamm's channels as well as live streaming pros channels. Um, Cassandra, uh, CK, which overlay are you using? Is it the curved theme? Uh, Paul Dixon will answer you on that. I believe it is. Sean, any advice if you can't afford a better Mac? Um, we talked about options in the interview I did with Glenn. So I would recommend watching that. Um, but you need to lower your production expectations essentially. So if you're trying to do too much and your computer can't handle it, you need to pull back. You need to just have a camera. You don't need to have all of the overlays, all of the videos, all the things, right? So just pull back your production and that will help you do that. All right, I'm gonna go, let's see, we have a lot more questions. So I'm gonna go into rapid fire mode. Are you guys ready? <laughs> rapid fire mode. Okay, if you have multiple Facebook pages, they are considered a platform or just Facebook as one platform. Uh, when I'm talking simulcasting, those would be different platforms that you're going to. Facebook is a platform in and of itself, but when you're talking simulcasting, you need that is a single uh, uh, place that you're sending out to. So yes, uh, bringing in Zoom from another computer, does it have to be Mac or Mac? It could be a PC, you just need that capture card to have that conversation between your, your computer and the other computer. Maurice, is it possible to use the ATEM Mini as a capture card? It is, however, we at Livestreaming Pros don't recommend it. What is your camera mic plugged into? I'm just using a USB mic plugged directly into my computer. Uh, that's all you need. I do that so that I can show you just how simple audio can be. So I don't even use a mixer or anything else. Joanna, what are the requirements that I need to do for me to be live? Um, take our workshop that, that walks you through how to get started without any gear. So livestreamingpros.com slash studio will get you started really quickly, looking more professional than you would on your own. And then also build up to a full studio set. Um, Joanna, do I, ha oh wait, I just answered that. What Mac are you using? How much RAM? That's all at livestreamingpros.com slash GLN. That link is in the description. Go check that out. Does text-to-speech work with Ecamm Streamlabs? Whoa. <laughs> uh, and Super Chats. Uh, don't know what you mean, Carrie. Clarify. Nikki, if I'm recording a live stream and I'm uh, using Restream Chat Overlay, is there a way to not record the Restream Chat on the recording? It, no. I mean, if you're, if you're sending that out, that would be... So Ecamm only records what is a dirty display uh, or dirty output, which means whatever you put out on the live stream is going to get recorded. Maybe one day they'll add the ability to, you know, uh, have multiple different uh, uh, clean and, an, and a dirty. So the clean meaning no overlays are shown and it's just the camera. But um, right now they don't have that and it also adds CPU usage. So that's probably why they haven't done that. Henry, how can I change permanently the audio source for each of the scenes every time after changing scenes, I have to unmute it. Um, I don't know why that's happening. That shouldn't happening, be happening because you should be able to lock that. Um, you should be able to lock that scene. So once you set the audio for that scene, lock it and then move on to the next one, change that. I'm betting your scenes are unlocked and that's causing things to get confused. Uh, Sebastian, will you eventually allow sh share screen to work with selected space on your PC as opposed to full desktop or current? Uh, you actually can. Uh, so I'm gonna actually go into demo mode here to show you. Uh, but when you're doing PIP, um, you can actually, here, hold on, just, let me go to my main cam here and show you. Uh, unlock, unlock. Um, so you can actually choose 
uh, which you're doing right here. Here's the button right here. So you can go to uh, show current application, this display, or you can actually choose the actual application itself. Um, and maybe you're looking for like a selected space, like you select the space in which you want it to record. Um, they don't have that, but uh, that you have, you have flexibility. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> Let's get back to something that looks good. <laughs> Eddie, using Canon uh, 5D, I, 5D Mark III USB cable plugged in. Uh, internet speeds are 40 megabits per second. Uh, live on Facebook, the live doesn't have an HD button, which we can choose video quality. Is it because it's USB connecting? Um, oh, <laughs> um, so you're, make sure that Ecamm is sending out a 1080 signal. Facebook themselves may not have given you access to 1080 streaming. So not everybody on Facebook has 1080 streaming. So you may still be streaming at 720. They definitely do a lot of compression on the Facebook side. So um, your recording, if you're trying to download that recording, that's not gonna be high quality at all. So hopefully that answers your question. David, during an interview, is it possible that my guest in Skype view monitor my Ecamm studio? Yeah, so when I bring a guest on, I send them my video source from Ecamm and then they see what's going out. So they know when they're on camera or not. So that is the best way to do that. Chris, uh, does it have a scene preview? No, not yet, but they do know that that's a need and they will work on that. So look forward to that soon. Uh, but after they're working on what they already have. Um, Will there ever be a special sponsor scene and pricing that you will suggest I can create one, but waiting for the internal? I need some clarification on that, Carol. I'm not exactly sure what you're asking. A special sponsor scene. Um, yeah, give me some clarification. And are you asking me from Live Streaming Pros as a, a partner with Ecamm or are you asking Ecamm specifically? Because I may not be able to answer that question if it's for Ecamm. Remco, can you show us how to make and use a widget? Oh, I already answered that. Rod, can you save different setups for different shows? I'm using three different shows. Absolutely, Rod. Uh, just a quick uh, look at what I have. So I have the Go Live Now. I have LSP, so Live Streaming Pros. I have different folders for different um, programs. So uh, I'm live on Go Live Now once a week, but my other shows, four days a week, or three, three other days a week, I'm live through LSP, so it's an entirely different setup. So yes, uh, that is how you do it. And I actually, in the video that I talked about uh, the production flow, I talk exactly about that. So go check that video out. Ricky, do you have any videos showing how to record courses via Ecamm? Um, so all you need to know is that in the destinations file, uh, you the, the destinations um, area, in Ecamm in the bottom uh, left, right corner. Uh, make sure you set it to record only. That's all you need to know. You can still like do pips and share your screen and all of that stuff. You set it up like you're going live and then you can record your courses. You can edit it later as well, but that's all you need to do is hit the record only button. Lonnie, which would you suggest, <laughs> which would provide a better quality video when bringing guests, Skype or Facebook Messenger video? Um, they're both bad. <laughs> Skype, I would say Skype. Um, Devin, I think it is. Uh, it's just streamed using Restream to Facebook, uh, to YouTube midstream, the Facebook went wonky, stayed online, but was looping the first 10 minutes with crappy audio. You streamed, streamed perfectly. Um, I, I did see some bugs, bug alerts in Restream. So there may be something there. Uh, I don't know what those bug alerts were because I didn't have time to read them, but also Facebook might have screwed up. If it happens again, like I, there are some things that are just buggy that might never happen to you again. Um, and so I would always do a test before you do your next live stream, private test to see what happens and if that's going to be a continuous issue or not. Um, how do you set up the video loop in the background? That is a video file that Paul Dixon creates for me. Uh, that you bring in, like I showed you how to bring in a, an animated file. Uh, what do you, per, 
why do you prefer your camera farther away? So my camera, watch the behind the scenes video. I, I talked about this in depth last week, but my camera is further away from me only because I have a teleprompter. I do not use that teleprompter live. That's a no, no. <laughs> um, however I do for like uh, bullet points sometimes, but uh, if I just want to make sure I'm staying on track, uh, but I do not use that scripted. Uh, but I also sometimes script certain videos like work, like course videos or YouTube videos, depending on the, the kind of video that I'm creating. So, uh, that is why my camera is so far away. Um, my budget restraints won't allow me more than a kit lens. How can I make, okay, we have a video Ken on how to achieve the blurred background effect. So on our YouTube channel and the live streaming pros channel, we have a, uh, how to, how to get a blurred background is the title of that one. So go watch that. That'll give you some good advice. Michael are you using Sony a 5100 with skin smoothing on. No, um, I'm not. I just look this beautiful. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, no, uh, I'm not using any, any of that, but I do have a vignette on. But that's what really should be only affecting the sides. Michael, is your USB mic, uh, or your USB mic, do you have lagging video sync issues when you need to tweak? No, I have never had to tweak. Um, I've never had to tweak audio in Ecamm. When you add different devices uh, to the mix, then sometimes you do. How do you check if your Facebook is on 1080? Um, just, uh, it should actually say in your settings somewhere in Facebook, but also when you're streaming at 1080 from Ecamm, if Facebook is streaming at 1080, because you can see the gear, if you on Facebook, there's a gear uh, icon at the bottom and that'll allow you to select the quality. Take a look at that and see what quality it allows you and then you'll know. Chris, um, sorry, uh, Carrie, when screen sharing, is there a way to put the chat on top of me? While screen sharing, is there a way to put the chat on top of me? Uh, you want the chat covering up your face? I feel like I'm not hearing you correctly. <laughs> because that doesn't sound right. Um, please clarify, Carrie, I'm sorry. Asking as someone wanting to have sponsors of my own shows, and do you have recommendations for commitments you make to get sponsors and promos? Got it. Okay. So, um, I actually do have, um, training coming out about that. And if, when you buy our studio workshop, you're actually getting a bundle. And in that bundle is a content strategy workshop, but uh, that, that talks about how to create great content, how to grow your audience, as well as how to uh, make money and how to grow your revenue. So in that workshop that's coming out soon, we talk in depth about that. Um, I believe I have a video on YouTube that kind of talks about that um, at an overview level. I can't remember if that one's still up, um, but I, uh, yeah. Uh, I actually, in our coaching program that you can only access once you become a student, um, in our coaching program, I definitely have videos that cover that. But that's a that's an in depth conversation for sure. Uh, Laban, I'm new to Ecamm. Yay! I would like to know if uh, we can add some moving graphics, or we must specify program for the graphic. Yeah, so you've seen me do moving graphics. Um, I I just put that up on screen a, a few minutes ago. Um, so that uh, is absolutely possible. You create that file outside of Ecamm and load that into Ecamm. Yesterday during my stream, every comment kept repeating at least five times or more. I bet you're on a restream. That was one of their bugs that I did see. Uh, they had rep rep repetitive comments coming through through restream going into Ecamm or wherever you're or whatever you're using. So I would say that that's probably the case with that. Um, yes, yes. So Noble. My audio is, is locked with my scene. So I don't know why you're having trouble with that. Um, maybe Katie, do you know of an issue with that? Let us know. Let's see. Okay. I just want to check to see if Carrie clarified, I think she got her, her answer. Thank you, Mike. I'm so glad that this has been helpful. Um, 
<laughs> Nikki, awesome. I love it. <laughs> uh, Alexa, how can I access the training in the account? Alexa, are you a student of ours? Um, of live streaming pros, not Ecams. Are you a student of live streaming pros? Um, if so, reach out to support at livestreamingpros.com and um, let us know what you're having trouble finding and we will get you taken care of. So again, you guys, um, we do have that whole training program right here, livestreamingpros.com slash studio. And also Paul Dixon just created overlay graphics for you guys. So everything that you're seeing me do today, you have the option to put into your own stream as well. So um, those 19 different overlays that you get in each package that you purchase. So uh, different design styles, different colors um, that you can grab there. And then you don't have to worry about creating your own because if I created my own, it would freaking suck. Oops. <laughs> it would suck because I suck at graphics. It would not look good. <laughs> the Ocean Adventure, Lord, you're the best. Thank you so very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> can I, uh, how can I bring in guests without using Skype or Zoom? Th that's coming soon. It's coming soon. I keep answering that. It's coming soon. <laughs> Seriously, so helpful. Um, Okay, Alexa, so you're talking Ecamm. What what training are you looking for? So I have specific Ecamm training for free right here. Um, and that is being updated. Those videos are in production now um, and that's coming soon, but I still have uh, videos there. Um, I don't know what training specifically you're looking for. So maybe that's what you're looking for. Just clarify for me. All right, you guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're live for go live now every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Usually I don't uh, go this long, but it was Q and A and I wanted to make sure everybody's questions were answered. Um, so thank you for hanging out. Thank you for all the great questions. I hope this has been super helpful. If you do have further questions, um, I'm doing a live Q and A tomorrow, uh, Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific on the live streaming pros channels that will talk more about more general stuff as well. So if you have general live streaming questions, uh, you can join me back here tomorrow at uh, youtube.com slash live streaming pros. But you guys definitely dig into Ecamm if you haven't already. It is such an amazing program. I love, love, love it. Um, and uh, it's interesting because next week, so this is, okay, guys, don't go anywhere. Okay. Don't go anywhere because next week, I believe it's next week. If I have my calendar correct in, in my head, next week, Michael Hyatt is joining us. Uh, to talk about how he went from vMix to Ecamm. So he swapped. So we set his studio up a few years ago, four years ago, maybe something like that, um, using vMix and a PC. He started using Ecamm recently and just fell in love with it. So he has swapped his whole studio setup to using Ecamm. So I'm gonna interview him about that switch um, in next week at 10 a.m. Pacific, right here on both Ecamm channels and live streaming pros channels. Uh, and Michael has been super involved in the Ecamm community. Uh, th so you probably know his name by now, <laughs> uh, but if you don't, he's uh, an amazing mentor of mine, an amazing human being, and we're going to have a blast next week. So join us then as well. And I will see you tomorrow on live streaming pros channels and next week on the Ecamm channels. Bye-bye. We're going to dance this out. Are you guys ready? All right. What music do we have on this one? I don't know. Let's see.